Greetings, brothers and sisters. We are the L Society. We are the Linux Society. We are here to enjoy and learn from each other and to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Linux. We are in 2016, and by now even Evil Corp has gone open source. No longer is source code secretly controlled by monster conglomerates. We all have the freedom to contribute to it and to use it. Brothers and sisters, we have won. Ja, dat is uh, even iets anders op Tido's dan we gewend zijn. Um, I'll switch to English, that was, uh, was asked. Um, thank you all very much for uh, coming uh, this morning uh, to Eindhoven for this talk. And um, uh, you already saw it, I'm afraid. I don't know if the sound will start over again, but um, what you saw is that, um, I don't know if you know the TV show called uh, Mr. Robot, but um, I was um, inspired by uh, the TV show uh, Mr. Robot and I thought it was quite a, um, a cool geek to start with a link uh, towards that show. Um, you already uh, saw the mask uh, going uh, away here from um, uh, uh, Mr. Robot mask, the Monopoly uh, mask, uh, but it is actually uh, uh, Tux, I think, uh, who has won. So. Um, Again, thank you very much uh, for having me here uh, today as, uh, as one of the speakers. Um, I will talk about uh, 25 uh, years of uh, Linux and I will emphasize the successes that we've uh, seen happening the last uh, uh, 25 years and also would like to have a uh, communication instead of uh, one-way communication. So, uh, if you have any questions, remarks, complaints, uh, whatsoever, uh, please uh, uh, let yourself hear uh, during this talk, because it's uh, only boring if you just hear me talking for the next uh, 55 minutes. So, uh, if you have anything to uh, comment, let me know. Um, let me see if it works. It did work before, of course. One moment. Uh, I'm losing, it's actually one of the, um, the points in this uh, whole presentation, of course, is that um, I have to use a Microsoft desktop instead of a uh, Linux desktop. Uh, but it is uh, LibreOffice that you actually see, um, but it got stuck now, so um, maybe I can ask my uh, nice assistant to uh, <laughs> have a look. <laughs> Actually, in the talk, it was about uh, Evil Corp, and of course, I don't ins in insinuate anything, but uh, actually, I just came back from uh, Washington at uh, our own conference, SUSECON, and it's just coincidence, I think. I don't know if you can see the backside of this. Uh, um, who knows, actually, what the name of our, um, uh, our animal, our uh, logo, our mascot is? Okay, go. It's almost, almost good, because actually, um, from our company, it's not, um, uh, um, I said it, we don't like it too much anymore if the name uh, of uh, this chameleon called Geeko is being used too much. Because the name is Geeko and it's too much like uh, Gecko, but it's not a Gecko, it's a chameleon actually. Um, but this one was uh, um, at the uh, booth of one of the companies that's one of the main uh, partners of uh, Susan nowadays, and it is actually the company that we just heard from a great talk from Henrik Jan before, um, Microsoft, who uh, actually was uh, apparently uh, the first uh, sales organization for Unix uh, many, many years ago. So um, what you can see is a nice loop here, because apparently many years, if I remember correctly from Henrik Jan's talk in 1985, uh, it was that uh, Bill Gates uh, was selling uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the Unix software and um, now uh, Microsoft, the company he uh, founded, uh, is one of the biggest uh, supporters of uh, Susan. 
And actually, that's a nice talk. If it's possible to go to the next slide. <laughs> Mr. Monopoly, it's not <laughs> going to work yet. It's stuck. Doesn't matter. Oh, hey, look, something is happening. You have to be careful what you do, because you can actually see what you do. Um, so let me first introduce myself. My name is... Yeah, that's actually the site I was just about to talk about, about me. Not too much. But um, I've been myself about 12 years now around the uh, open source uh, um, uh, business. And I myself am no technician. I am a marketing and sales uh, guy. And um, I got infected by the op open source virus by uh, the company from Hendrik Jan Thomas, who was the former keynote speaker. And um, I started uh, uh, my first uh, job in open source with that company. And when I heard about the whole concept of open source and uh, Linux, I uh, liked it a lot. So um, from then on, I uh, decided to uh, stick in this uh, uh, business. And um, I like the idea of one for all and all for one very much. Um, what I'm going to uh, talk about is um, 25 years ago, um, if we're able to, uh, to uh, uh, get it up again, um, uh, Linux uh, started by uh, the famous announcement uh, by uh, Linus Torvalds. And uh, what you saw is that um, uh, 25 years ago, if we have any um, ID, like 25 years, what are we talking about? Um, there was, uh, when we were looking up uh, in the preparation of this talk, what happened exactly 25 years ago, there were some things happening in the, uh, is it working? Um, it's not. <laughs> Uh, you see, Microsoft with uh, LibreOffice. I'm um, talking about the L Society one. So where did we win and where do we still have a way to go? The combination between uh, LibreOffice and uh, Microsoft uh, Windows is um, something uh, to, to work at. Um, not recovered yet. Start recovery. Okay. Interesting. Um, so d does anybody of you know which... A uh, computer game came out uh, exactly 25 years ago. Pac-Man? I think uh, that's, that's a bit older. Now it's, um, we had to look it up, but it's uh, called, uh, the game called uh, Lemmings. You all remember Lemmings? Well, that's uh, apparently, yeah, exactly, quite an uh, um, addicting uh, uh, game. But that uh, game is uh, 25, um, 25 years ago. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I still like to put my company name, Suze, uh, in front. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr. Robot. I think I'm there. I'll see if it actually works as well. Spinderella, cut it up one time. Also, 25 years ago, this song. I don't know about the average audience here, but... Uh, this is also exactly, uh, let's talk about Linux. That's um, actually, uh, anybody knows who those uh, um, American famous, uh, um, what, they, what they're called like? Yeah, thank you very much. Very good, very good. You just earned yourself a Microsoft, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I have one without Microsoft as well, if you like, if you like. but you just earned that one. Thank you so much. It is salt and pepper, yes. And uh, the former slide, that's also 25 years ago. So um, what happened 25 years ago is that uh, apartheid was um, uh, broken down uh, in, in, in a fast manner. So um, that's all already 25 years ago. And um, here it is. You see, I, uh, I told you. Uh, this is uh, what lemmings uh, looked like uh, back th those days. I uh, don't know how addicted you all were, but I was. And um, another thing um, what uh, uh, happened at those days um, was that um, you saw that uh, uh, technicians, uh, the, the geeks of those days, they created computer games and they created other more serious programs uh, just by themselves. And actually, one of the uh, messages I have for this talk today is that it was great and uh, you were all able, if you were a real, true genius, 
to do that by yourself, but nowadays it's uh, not possible anymore to do it by yourself. So um, my call for action for everybody here at Tito's and actually the whole L Society, because um, the link, the name of this uh, talk is L Society One, and the L Society in the television series, Mr. Robot, it's called the F Society, and I thought, well, the L Society, Linux Society, and. I, I even have to give credits actually to the CTO of uh, the company of SUSE because uh, um, he made up uh, this, uh, um, this act. Uh, it was first uh, performed at uh, the LinuxCon in uh, Berlin in, uh, in September uh, this year. So it's not even my own uh, uh, thought, but I just say, why don't you just copy? Huh? Better copy something than uh, uh, think of something which is not so strong. But the whole idea of uh, this slide is to uh, explain you that um, it was uh, possible back those days to create something uh, in your attic and just uh, start uh, coding and make something which is still known now. Like I believe, but I'm sorry, I don't know anymore, one of them is uh, the creator of Prince of Persia. That's the whole idea. This picture. Um, Henrik Jan Thomas can, uh, will probably know all of them uh, uh, maybe uh, personally. Uh, I know only one person and that's, uh, um, well I, I've met him once or twice at the, the Linux conferences, uh, but uh, this gentleman here, who knows uh, who that is? This gentleman. Anybody? You can earn a t-shirt or a Kiko or... No, uh, no ideas. The company that I work for. Ralph Luxa. Yes, you earned yourself a geeko. Very good. It's Ralph Luxa, and Ralph Luxa was uh, one of the, uh, as you see, uh, early uh, adopters of uh, Linux. And this is, was uh, apparently '94, but um, he was a close contact to uh, well, the, the rest of the group and also to Linus uh, for um, many years by that time. And uh, Ralph Lexa is uh, still in uh, in SUSE and he's still uh, twisting the technical wheels at SUSE as president, global, uh, something technical. <laughs> Really, really cool guy. Um, I just saw him uh, last week, and uh, um, he's he's really uh, fantastic in making very complex uh, technology understandable, even for people like me. So <laughs> that says a lot. Um, so this is um, uh, from from those days. But Linux now turned to 25 years, and if you look at the human brain. After 25 years, it transforms. It transforms from uh, being uh, extremely well in uh, creating uh, new thoughts and creativeness and all those things. But then it goes to a point where uh, cooperation is, is needed, where cooperation is essential, where communication is essential. And that's the link I'm uh, making here today. Again, the call to action, make sure that we all, as uh, geeks, like I'm not a technician, but I think, well, many people in non-geek areas of me call me the geek, so I probably am. Um, but what you see is that um, it's important to cooperate. Uh, all those, uh, those scientists, uh, they were able uh, to be a genius on their self. I think, and I've uh, seen proof of it, that being a, a genius nowadays means that you also are able to cooperate, to listen, to recreate, to co-create. That is the message that I like to bring to go for another 25 years of uh, open source in general and Linux uh, together. So, um, Mr. Asimov said, uh, as you know, uh, those people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those who do, to those of us who do, but I don't have the guts to say us, uh, them. So um, actually what we say is uh, don't think you can comprehend all the uh, science there is uh, at the moment. Um, please uh, cooperate. So what you saw is that the, the lone wolves the really strong um, uh, uh, scientists, uh, the, the creators of, uh, of Linux, uh, the creators of the great computer games, we all still remember. Um, 
they were really, uh, in many cases, lone wolves who created fantastic things. But um, we have to go to a uh, power of the pack. Uh, if we can work together, we can create beautiful things. So um, the talk is called The L Society Won. But um, where did we win? Well, um, I've listed a couple of things here that I think are great where we won. And um, actually, I want to pick out of them. But if you disagree with any of these, let me know. But um, I want to show you something which is, I think, really, really awesome. And that is the, the Raspberry Pi. Because um, I've got one here with me. You will probably know uh, the Raspberry Pi. But I, I really think it's, it's awesome that we have something like this nowadays. And I'm, I'm proud, well, being a part of uh, SUSE, that actually this is the 460-bit version uh, operating system for Raspberry Pi. Uh, SUSE on, on Raspberry Pi. And um, what you see is that um, also further on in my presentation, one of the things that we haven't achieved yet is getting enough uh, open source and Linux technology at schools, at public schools, uh, from the uh, young kids until uh, the universities. Although at universities, of course, you see more and more now that uh, open source and, and Linux is getting the standard. But um, this uh, little box can help us all to get um, open source and Linux into the education a lot more. I'll come back to that later. Um, any uh, um, elements that I mentioned here, it's a mixture of technologies, uh, corporations um, uh, that are there that I uh, define as an area where we as open source, the L Society, uh, where we won. Anybody disagrees? Yes. Yeah, can you explain to me what you mean uh, L Society Win and Mobile? Android. Android. Uh, Android. Mm -hmm. um, I don't one find one. Uh, mobile Android. devices very free and open source because there is a lot of uh, proprietary shit in there, also with Android. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm tracked. So uh, you mean the, 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 the mobile and you think. Um, well, it, it is still based upon uh, on, on, on Linux, of course, and uh, you're right that it is uh, diffusing, but actually, great point, and it's actually one of the points in this presentation later on, so uh, thank you very much for this, uh, for this feedback, and um, it is one of the dangers, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, not Sousa at least, I don't know if it's Sousa's opinion, but it's my opinion, that um, one of the dangers is that um, uh, to much of the uh, proprietary elements are coming into uh, open source uh, products and technologies. But a great point, and I'll, I'll come back to that for sure. Any other uh, um, elements where there is doubt in your uh, minds? Yes? Raspberry, uh, it's, uh, originally it's uh, Debian based or yep. Linux based, but uh, pretty not the Microsoft port of their system to the Raspberry Pi. So it's a question of time uh, until the Joe Average uh, discovers that that's a Windows device. Okay, so uh, the, 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 the Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows on, on Raspberry Pi, right. that's already out there. Okay. Well, at least there are great uh, options and you see that uh, big companies uh, like the number two in Enterprise Linux, SUSE, is picking up uh, these technologies and um, uh, the operating system, uh, the, the SLES operating system, is uh, 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 totally for, um, uh, for free on, on the Raspberry Pi. So it's uh, um, uh, fully open source, because um, we actually are proud to be calling ourselves the open, open source uh, company. Because uh, we are open source and we will stay open source for all technology. Um, I've defined the areas where we won. I've also defined some uh, uh, elements and uh, aspects where we are on the winning hand, but there is still a lot to happen. Like I put the school Raspberry Pi uh, on the winning hand, because actually uh, like those kind of uh, developments, what you see is that uh, um, the, the, the Microsoft uh, or um, other 
uh, companies jumping on the Raspberry Pi and putting more and more, uh, trying to put more uh, propriety elements in it is one of the threats. Um, but we are on the winning hand and elements like uh, storage is uh, um, one of the technologies uh, I, I like to pick out because what you see is that um, only a few years ago um, almost every enterprise storage solution was very proprietary and if you wanted to do anything with your storage you had to go to those companies and uh, ask for uh, approval and even if you were not careful enough uh, it might be even the fact that the uh, software that you put um, on those storage solutions could be theirs instead of yours and th those kind of things were happening and what you see is now that big open source through open source companies are, uh, are jumping on, on storage so open source storage solutions are winning very very strongly at the moment we're not there yet but uh, you see that um, open source storage is, uh, is moving up very very uh, uh, in, in a very very great manner and um, uh, Again, uh, well, I don't want to be too much of a, a SUSE uh, salesman here, but I can't stop, uh, like I started 12 years ago, loving open source. I cannot stop loving SUSE nowadays. Um, SUSE is also now jumping really on, on the technology of, uh, of, of storage. So enterprise storage is something that uh, we are pushing heavily. Um, so to, to come back to uh, the, the, the 25 of Linux, uh, years of Linux and, and the uh, L Society, um, I would like to um, call something out that I have uh, I've, I've, I've seen myself happening, and that is uh, if you have a corporation that is working well, a corporation between a community of open source uh, um, environments, uh, the organizations, companies, uh, uh, foundations that are supporting it, and, and the customers. If they all work together based upon open source, the, uh, uh, the, the developments that you see around those uh, products are much, much uh, more successful. In fact, last week in, uh, in Washington, I was uh, looking at this uh, presentation by uh, Patrick uh, Swartz um, and Patrick uh, Swartz uh, was telling a story about his um, uh, uh, salt uh, solution and uh, within uh, SUSE Manager which is a, one of the SUSE, uh, sorry one of the um, system management uh, open source software uh, solutions and he was doing a talk about that and he um, had about an hour talk, but the whole uh, call to action and the whole uh, uh, purpose of his talk, why he came from the other side of uh, the US to Washington, was to uh, please ask companies to keep on uh, working together. So he said in this presentation that the cooperation between the company, fully open source company SUSE, with the company SaltStack, the company behind um, uh, Salt, that um, they work together so fast that um, he heard a year ago for the first time about, um, about SALT, about SUSE Manager, and now this year he was doing a talk on how successful this uh, uh, solution was for him. And he literally said, um, this success within 12 months was only possible uh, with open source software. He is in the IT industry for many, many years and he had many, many situations where he wanted to have certain elements into his enterprise software and um, it was just totally impossible uh, before to get something like uh, what he established there in, uh, in 12 months. So uh, it was really great to see that talk and um, he said it was only possible because of the cooperation and because the cooperation between those organizations, all uh, stakeholders around this uh, um, great uh, initiative was based upon open source software. So now I'm actually coming back to what you said because uh, the door to open source and the door to more success is open. But um, yeah, there are some uh, 
uh, blockades. And sorry if the picture has got a big mix-up, because that's one of the things where we did not win yet. That's the uh, open source desktop, in my opinion, because uh, this is uh, LibreOffice, and I was working together with Microsoft Office, uh, and, and it's, it looks not so nice anymore as it used to be, but the picture is still clear, because um, of course, if you as an open source company are going to create vendor lock-in, you will block the success. Obvious one at this talk, but I'm doing this talk at other places than just open source conferences, and there it's not so uh, straightforward. Um, other things that are uh, blocking, the, uh, in my opinion, the, the success of uh, open source and a uh, fantastic future for open source is um, if companies start only consuming or customers just consume and do not give anything back to the community. A sort of e egoistic way of using the, uh, the technology. That's possible to do it with open source and it's totally uh, allowed if you want to do it. But it will block the success and I'm pretty sure that the uh, total success of uh, all IT, all open source will be uh, blocked if um, uh, too many companies are just consuming and not contribu contributing anymore. Again, if somebody disagrees with me, please let me know, because it's just my opinion. It's only one. Um, well, yeah, selfish contribution. So um, if you're going to put back uh, elements in the uh, open source software uh, projects that are just beneficial for yourself. So, um, yeah, you put things back, you contribute back to the, uh, uh, to the software, but it's only uh, something that uh, you can use. Yeah. Anybody has an example of this? We have an example because I think selfish contribution in a way is the way it should be. Yeah. If you don't make something you use, it's perfect for you, but you do it for someone else, chances are nobody's going to use it. Yeah. So All right. Great. Um, yeah. Did, did Microsoft with the uh, Hyper-V? Uh, yeah. 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 And he, he, he the only consuming Apple? <laughs> yeah, only consuming Apple, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Apple, of course, is officially not Linux, but, uh, uh, but, but Unix. But yeah, yeah f f great, great example, yeah. And anybody else an example of selfish contribution where you think it will harm or maybe like uh, uh, Jan says, um, it's even not a problem if uh, companies are doing uh, selfish contributions to the technology? Because please, if you disagree, that's great to hear. I think all router companies uh, are based ah. on, uh, on, uh, on Linux of, uh, or a GNU software, but they, they don't contribute back. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to, uh, to change firmware on these devices, although they should be open. Yeah, yeah router uh, software It's a good example. Router software. Um, if you want to take control, I think if, as a, a company, you want to have uh, pure control over um, sort of uh, open source um, uh, technologies. Um, again, an example, sorry again for mentioning SUSE so much, but that's the company I know the most about. Uh, we bought uh, the technology of uh, Open Ethic, uh, I believe last month. And um, when it's the first time actually that SUSE uh, bought technology, uh, open source technology, but when we bought it, it's very, very clear that it will stay open source, that we will not uh, do anything <coughs> to harm to, uh, uh, so that other uh, distributions or other um, uh, communities cannot use it in the future. It will definitely stay fully uh, supported by, uh, 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 by SUSE, and it will absolutely stay uh, totally open source. You had something yeah, to? I don't think control is necessarily a, a bad thing. We accept certain benevolent dictators in open source communities. Okay. Uh, but if you do uh, uh, take control and, and uh, uh, you, have, you have to risk that somebody will fork your project. Yeah. And so you have control, but only until a certain po uh, point where people want each other to fork your project. Yeah. So okay. I think it's necessarily a bad thing to oh. uh, have a, a clear vision and take control of your project. Also leadership. Yeah. Also leadership, yeah. Yeah. A good thing that there is control. Yeah. A good thing that there is control. But, um, yeah, because I think when it is open source, yeah. you can say, oh, I, I want another uh, uh, control mechanism. So, yeah, you can work, work it and do it on your own. Even on Wikipedia, which is open as, as open as it gets. 
um, there is some control and there is some, some vision on what is accepted and acceptable for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, I think there will always be some, uh, some degree of control. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, what did you say? Uh? I was saying it's still group control. Exactly. You, you can be part of controlling yeah. the unit, and I think what you can be control is that the single company with only their own uh, aims in mind. Agenda. Yeah, their own agenda. Yeah. They, they control something with uh, they, they've got another uh, uh, interest. Uh, another interest uh, uh, in, in the results. The, the yeah. Absolutely. If you don't accept it, we can it. Yeah, but, but I, I want to say two things about that because it's, it's great. Um, uh, first, I think uh, an example where control was not so well is when um, uh, Oracle took over uh, Open Office and they wanted to have a, um, so much control over uh, what <coughs> happened that there was a fork and now we've got LibreOffice which is uh, very successful and works for, uh, for many people. Um, so there are examples, I think, where um, it is a fact that uh, uh, control can be uh, harming uh, in the viewpoint of many open source, uh, of the open source community. Well, I, can't th I think the example of LibreOffice is quite carried uh, wide by many people in the open source uh, community. Um, and the other thing about forking, uh, there is a, uh, a risk. I'm a marketeer, a sales guy, and when you uh, uh, want to make money, because my opinion, I don't know if you'll agree, I, I don't think so, but that doesn't matter, it's also important that we make some money somewhere in open source. Um, if there would not have been make money, it would not have been as successful as it is now. And if um, we keep on forking uh, too much, too many, then uh, it might be uh, damaging for the success of enterprise uh, open source solutions. Yeah, I'm I, dropping... It comes back to control, so if you do look at the control not well, if you really expect it, yeah, then you get a legal office or a new form, okay. whatever. Yeah. If you behave well, yeah, of course, then you can make some money and uh, uh, solve that thing. All right. You can that Linux has enormous control over the Linux kernel. Yeah, that's right. So maybe conclude with this uh, uh, blocket of control. Control can be uh, uh, holding it back, but if you do it in the right way, in the fair way, if you have all the other elements uh, or many of the other elements uh, in the right manner, that it will not harm. Uh, in fact, that it's necessary. That's what we all conclude. You're right. Thank you so much for this uh, contribution. Oh, uh, help. Uh oh. Um, Oh, here you go. Phew. Okay, um, so I've uh, put up some more uh, elements here. Fragmentation, that uh, uh, can be a, uh, a, a danger. Um, so there are many elements that can, uh, can block it, but um, if it's just one of those, I think we're still able to go through that door. We're still able to um, to go into the open source, but if uh, too many of those uh, blockades are there, it will be uh, uh, challenging and uh, uh, open source and Linux in general will have some challenges. Um, we talked about uh, the successes and the ones and the uh, uh, elements and technologies where we are on the winning end for Linux and open source, but um, we might have some uh, uh, elements where there are opportunities and actually to be honest I first had lost but um, when I was thinking over this presentation I'll keep it positive so there are some opportunities and, and one of them we've mentioned a lot uh, that's a desktop and um, actually in, in Washington I met somebody who said this will be the year and uh, well 2017 will be the year of the desktop <laughs> and uh, yeah that's something that's been said <laughs> exactly <laughs>
Yeah, but, but I have to say he um, uh, is a guy from the UK and he does have some great enterprise successes uh, with the desktop. If you want to like know more about it, I can, I can tell you more, uh, but um, a company called iLayer and um, he's, he's doing a lot with, even with the, uh, uh, with the SUSE desktop, with, with SLED it's called. And there are some great uh, examples, but well, we all know that uh, if you go and uh, talk about the success of Linux and you do it in your uh, uh, surrounding, in your community where IT is not dominant, that many people uh, think that uh, Linux is uh, well still a, a minority in the, um, in the total IT world. But I think it's actually, like we had this gentleman just saying before, it's dominating uh, the whole world. What about Chrome, uh, Chrome OS and Chrome Boot? Chrome OS, Chromebooks, what about it? Yeah, it's, it's upcoming, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah? It's Linux in principle, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, great example, uh, Chromebooks. My son is uh, just started, uh, um, how you call that in English? Well, uh, for, for the Dutch people, a middlebare school. So, uh, the school just after primary, mm -hmm. secondary school. Yeah, thank you. And um, at his school, uh, NSK in Nijmegen, uh, they all uh, get, well they have to buy it, at least the parents, a, uh, a Chromebook. And all the uh, training material, uh, they have the, the ambition to have all the material on that uh, book. So also from environment reason and all, they, they put everything on that uh, Chromebook. My son is not too happy because uh, it's not possible to play Minecraft on this machine actually. So now he finally has his new speed uh, laptop, but he's not able to play his favorite game. I don't mind because I'm pretty sure that he's that I know what he's doing. Jan? So if you give him a Debian or a SUSE machine, will he be able to do all his work? It's a good question. It's a good question. The example is, is great because... Chromebooks are great, but if you're locked into those, yeah. I, I, I like them less. Yeah. yeah. So you say Chromebook has got some downsides for you. Is that what you say? What I'm... Um, I would like to know if he has the freedom to use any system he would like. Yeah. And uh, if he's able to do everything with the Debian machine, you have pretty much choice. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll come back to the uh, success of uh, Linux and open source at schools uh, um, uh, later on. But you're absolutely right. It's uh, it's it's we're not there yet. That's why I still see it as a um, well, actually a loss. Uh, but there are opportunities for the next 25 years to uh, to get there. Um, but but me is a, a, a fantastic or a horrible example. Like I used to work for uh, AT Computing, uh, vendor neutral uh, Linux uh, company, and I learned to work with uh, Linux. And and I uh, really uh, I'm terrible at machines. They only brought a machine into the into my office if they still wanted to know sure that it would be break broken in in, in about a day. So that's why it was my purpose, according to the technologists at uh, AT Computing. So, um, but actually I was managed to to keep a machine longer than six months alive, at some point. And then I start working for SUSE, uh, Linux company, very very open source. But there is if you're not able to maintain it yourself, I had to go to a, uh, a Microsoft uh, desktop. So I've got beautiful stickers on my laptop there, but to be honest, it's just running Microsoft. Oh, yeah, sorry. Wow. And I can tell you why. SUSE is part of a, a lot bigger company called Microfocus, and that is just being a part of this, this huge, big company that um, it's not possible. Uh, only if I uh, support it myself, then you're able to run uh, a Linux machine. Can you bring your own maintainer? Your own maintainer? Yeah, have a friend do it for you. Uh, yeah, if, if, if that friend is also 24-7 available, because like, I was in Washington last week and I will be in Dubai and South Africa, and well, the, the time frames are changing a bit. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it would be possible, it's just the choice of this fantastic super open source company, but it's just, um, and I, I, I don't say I, I agree with this, it's just the fact that me being used to work with LibreOffice, with Linux, with many open source uh, tools like the GIMP and everything, I now, ah, help, you see? Yeah, <laughs>
Uh, this may be just because I didn't put it on power. Maybe it's just my fault. <laughs> well, we still uh, claim that we won on the Enterprise server. Sorry? You still claim we won on the Enterprise server. But, but your own Enterprise isn't really cooperative. Oh, the desktop isn't. Uh, on what we use on in uh, the server uh, side, on the server side, uh, well, I don't know, but I don't think there will be many proprietary uh, servers running at Susan. Um, well, yeah, I, I think I can say that it's being recorded, so I have to be careful. But um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there won't be much uh, uh, proprietary software in our infrastructure. Microfocus maybe, but not not in Susan. What about macOS desktops? Are they allowed? Or? And, and it, everything is allowed, as long as you're able to maintain it yourself. So, the people with the macOS desktop, they quite often are, uh, at first, the, 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 the nerds, the technologists, and uh, second, they know how to maintain it. And maybe, I don't know, I've never used Apple machines myself, but I don't see uh, blue screens very much on, uh, on Apple's, so maybe it's just that it just works uh, as a great desktop. I don't know. I haven't used it myself, so uh, shoot me. Um, well, the, the opportunities, or uh, what you say, where we have uh, something to win, is the uh, curriculum at schools. Um, I'll come back to that uh, a lot more. Uh, ERP software. Um, we at Susan. Uh, we work heavily together with, uh, with SAP, both uh, German companies, and that's fantastic for enterprise, because it's uh, one of the reasons that SUSE is so extremely successful, is because it works great together with proprietary software like SAP, and you can, yeah, you can uh, have an opinion on it, but it's just the fact that it's, it is so successful because. And um, I put word of mouth there, because again, if you're uh, going outside the IT, uh, uh, areas and, and talk to other people like people who play tennis or football, those kind of people, they quite often don't even know about the success of uh, Linux and open source. So if you're going to talk about uh, Linux at schools, that's something that you have to deal with quite often. So uh, many decision makers who are part of, uh, not part of the L Society, but are part of uh, the, the outside world, they don't have an ID how successful, how strong, how uh, solid open source and Linux is. Uh, well, Office software, we said a lot about that. 3D software, um, as far as I know, is still, uh, at least in commercial side, very much dominated. And uh, now it gets a bit berserk. Here we go. I'll click through. Games, I see. Sorry? Games are still lacking on... Linux platform. But there's a huge opportunity there. Yeah. Yeah. Steam is uh, developed. Yeah. Steam is uh, yeah. building its own special. Yeah. And and it, it, great. So uh, it was said here that game gaming industry is still uh, dominated by proprietary software. Yeah. At the moment it is, but it is. Uh, I agree. Great opportunity. Um, I played around and it didn't even broke with a knock in um, in in Washington. So a. Uh, um, uh, probably, um, maybe I'm saying it wrong, but I think it's a Raspberry Pi um, sort of uh, tuned to be a gaming uh, uh, machine. It looks, it looks very cool and it is, uh, I think if I give it to my son, he will think that it's really a cool machine and he doesn't care if it's open source or proprietary. Well, he does, otherwise he gets no food and no m payment uh, every week and things like that. But um, besides that, uh, like the other children, um, he, he doesn't care like if it's open source or proprietary. But the gaming industry is a good example where I think if we'll uh, do the same talk about 30 years, in five years time, that um, open source uh, gaming will be uh, very much, uh, uh, very uh, much more popular. Yes. Also, one example is the video production. Video production. There's a lot, uh, especially in rendering and stuff. A lot of Linux desktops showing up at conferences. Yeah. So video rendering, uh, yeah, video. Uh, say the Pixar movies. Uh, Pixar movies. Uh, it's all proprietary. I think they're too. They might be, but. And is is, is Blender? Um, they're opening up now. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, I believe, but uh, again, it's just what I heard or read in Linux magazines and things that uh, Blender is quite successful getting in that area, isn't it? Yeah. So. Um, oh, yeah. So. Um, 
Uh, one of the, the, the challenges, or actually the areas what I'm, uh, <coughs> like, when I introduced myself I didn't say that I founded LPI Netherlands together with uh, uh, some very uh, uh, open source minded uh, people. And when I was working for uh, LPI, um, I was always also here at uh, TDOs and at many other conferences uh, trying to get people, and especially schools, public schools, to go to open source. And I lobbied for that a lot, and I can talk, do talks about that um, uh, about an hour, but um, now I'm going to uh, summarize that quite a, a bit, because we've got about um, uh, 10 minutes uh, left. Um, but if you're going to lobby, if you think it's important that schools are using open source, the first uh, tip that I give you all is make sure that you um, emphasize what you're talking about. Because if you mix them up, the desktop, the operation side, and the curriculum, then it will be very mixed up discussion and it will end nowhere, is my, uh, my learning. So, if you're going to talk about uh, open source at schools, please make sure what you're talking about. And I, as I can talk about all of these for um, well, quite a while. But I'm going to emphasize now on the curriculum, because um, I did a couple of talks about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the open generation gap. Uh, the open generation gap is uh, something that we, we found was out there. It's uh, the gap between what the labor market is asking and uh, the number of uh, Linux professionals, open source professionals in general, that are uh, finishing school. And that gap between demand and uh, supply is, is, is damaging, in, in my opinion, uh, it was very strongly uh, damaging the success of open source at schools, um, but it is uh, still now, I still think we have a lot to do there. So that gap is what, um, what I uh, uh, defined together with, uh, with you, Maurice, yeah, we did it uh, together, right? Quite a year, five years back or so? I think so. Yeah. So, um, uh, Maurice here uh, is also, uh, um, we, we looked at this, what's happening, and we define it as the open generation gap. Um, how is it nowadays? Well, um, I think I see many people nodding, so I'll just quickly <laughs> just assume that uh, you will see that uh, open source is not there yet uh, by a long while for uh, schools. So, there is actually uh, something important. If you're going to talk about uh, the open generation gap. If you're going to try to lobby for open source and Linux at schools, um, this is an important number. And again, uh, a geek for who knows. If you read the open uh, uh, the investigation, the inquiry by the Linux Foundation, you might recognize the number. Ninety-three hmm. percent. Nobody. No guesses. No. 93% is uh, what the Linux Foundation, in their totally independent uh, survey, found out as the number of employers in enterprise surrounding that are uh, needing, uh, that have a strong demand for more Linux and open source professionals than they have at the moment. So if you're talking about the demand for open source and Linux professionals, it's quite often not seen, but well, maybe it's not that independent investigation, but it is absolutely there. I see it myself. We at SUSE, we've got over uh, 70 uh, open positions at the moment, and the majority is technical. So um, many other open source companies, also uh, Dutch companies, startups uh, from universities, there is a strong demand for open source uh, professionals, a lot stronger than the, uh, the schools, the public schools are um, uh, finishing at the moment. As I said, maybe the, in, uh, the survey of uh, Linux Foundation is not that independent, but um, I, I looked at it and I think it's quite okay, but there is a whole pile of investigations, uh, even from the uh, companies like Gartner and Forrester who said even a couple of years back uh, that, um, well, open source didn't pay them so they didn't really uh, uh, say much about uh, the success or the forecasting of open source and, and Linux in general. But now they've really seen it, like if even is uh, Microsoft putting its logo on uh, Geeko, maybe that's already uh, quite clear how successful it is. So um, I think we can uh, check uh, it off. There is a open source gap, um, and, and 
as, as one of the solutions that uh, I have found, uh, um, seen for it just last week, is um, that companies uh, are putting uh, great uh, software on, on elements like Raspberry Pi. Because when you were trying to get uh, schools to uh, train in Linux, um, it was quite often blocked. That's what we experienced uh, ourselves by the, um, the administrators of, the, uh, of these public schools. Because they said uh, they don't want to have a mixed environment. Mostly because they had no idea what Linux was at that point. It was just dominated by, uh, by Microsoft. And with this $35 uh, pieces of uh, fantastic technology, it's uh, very, I think, low boundary to get uh, open source uh, and Linux to schools more and more. So that's something that I like a lot. So this is a way I think we can uh, um, break out this, uh, um, this, this solution. Um, so that's, that's, that's my, uh, uh, my idea. Do you have other ideas? No, I'm um, uh, asking a question. Are there any initiatives people can join in uh, to help children uh, get going with, with Linux? Say I want to spend a couple of hours each week helping kids learn Linux. Are there initiatives? I, um, well, I used to work for LPI and uh, oh, somebody is saying there yes. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, communities in the Netherlands. It's called uh, Codeur and those yeah. guys uh, use open source software to make uh, kids curious about making things. And if kids are getting curious and see I can make things, I can adjust the website. Mozilla has a great program also for that. Uh, people are asking for more openness mm -hmm. in all the property uh, misery around them. Code Uur is a grote organisatie met heel veel. How is it spelled? Code Uur or? Code Uur. Code Uur. Code Uur. Code Uur. There are a lot of more of those kind of organisations in the Netherlands. And look what Mozilla is doing on education for kids. Also, something worth mentioning is uh, Code Dojos. Code Dojos, yeah. Uh, where kids learn to program and then uh, they will learn. Yeah. So there are uh, many uh, examples of uh, where we all can work together in ethic. If we don't do it, even it will be uh, killed. So um, to to summarize this uh, this talk and and the call uh, to action is uh, one for all and all for one. Uh, together we stand and divided we fall. We'll have to work together. And um, uh, yeah, I think uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention. We're going to. Uh, Mr. Uh... Sisters and brothers, we are the L Society. We are responsible for the next 25 years and more to come. Let's collaborate. Let's be the Avengers. Let us continually care together and not allow evil corpses to derail us from our values and rebuild again. All for one and one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. Thank you very much.